You're listening to the Guest of Horror, and this week's episode is for Wes. Welcome to the Guest of Horror. I am your host, Boris. On each episode of this podcast, I introduce you to someone within the horror community that I think is worth getting to know. Y'all, we're starting off with such a banger of an episode. I am joined by Emma from Spooky Astronauts. Uh, she's done a ton of content regarding Scream, uh, because obviously the new one is, is coming out, or has come out as of the time of this recording. It's actually been out for a day in Sweden. So I haven't gotten a chance to see it yet. So obviously there's not going to be like any spoilers for the new one. But we talk about the franchise as a whole, and we end up having a, a pretty good discussion about um, film criticism and sort of the, the, the changing media landscape landscape as a whole. This was so much fun. I feel so blessed to have such cool people come on the show, such cool and knowledgeable people. Uh, man, uh, I just have like a quick editor's note. Uh, there was some te technical difficulties when recording this episode. So about like seven or eight minutes in, there's going to be a shift in uh, audio quality uh, for the better, actually. So it, it was... Uh, Maybe a blessing in disguise that the 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 the, the technical difficulties happened. Oh, man, I just I felt really horrible because we were uh, sort of pressed for time when when recording, and it, it took up a bit of, of time. But man, uh, I am a wish such a pro. Uh, she, so uh, all is good, and uh, I think this episode is actually filled with good vibes and, and fun moments. Um, and with that being said, uh, let's uh, actually take a listen to the interview I did with Emma from Spooky Astronauts. All right, I am here with Emma from Spooky Astronauts. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be fun. We're going to talk about Scream. Um, but before we get to that, could you just introduce yourself? Tell, tell us a little bit about what you do. and, and uh... Uh, So I have a YouTube channel uh, that specializes in horror and thriller. Pretty much I'm just a viewer, but I like talking about horror and thriller movies and um, doing deep dives in some films, reviewing um, films, uh, and finding a lot of... I, tr I like to find a lot of hidden gems and uh, films that people don't talk about. I mean, people always... There's somewhere on the internet people are talking about films or certain films, but I like to find, like, dark cinema and interesting films that maybe aren't highlighted as much so I can give people recommendations. My idea behind my channel is not so much just to be another horror channel talking about um, all of the popular franchises. I do that sometimes, but also I like to be a tool. Like, I always try and provide something helpful um, for the audience. Yeah, for sure. And that's, uh, you know, a, a recurring... A recurring theme through, uh, throughout this podcast is like all of my guests uh, have this sort of uh, fascination for like deep cuts and and really obscure stuff. You know, like I, I really enjoy, you know, that's one of the reasons you're coming on this podcast because um, every time I throw on one of your videos, I'm probably going to discover something that I haven't seen before. Uh, some weird like foreign stuff or, or you know, something like that. And, and, I, and I really like that, you know, you, you don't just talk about uh, hard, like, you know, disturbing or like dark cinema. It's kind of weird to uh, or, or like hard to categorize some of that stuff. Like, would you really call a Michael Haneke movie a horror film? Like, no, oh, that's probably like more of a drama. But, you know, that stuff gets weird. Yeah, that it is really hard. I always um, find it weird when people put horror in the box, like in that box as well. But people say that about really typical horror movies like Hereditary or like, you know, things like that. Uh, people talk about them not being a horror. That's like a huge conversation, unfortunately, like on the internet right now. A lot of people like that. But I love genre bending films. Like those are all of the best films are genre bending. So I, I'm, um, I hate really, you know, categorizing anything but I have to you have to when you go like niche and you have to you know do titles and all that kind of stuff you just kind of have to say this is horror but it's also many other things right I saw that you posted on Twitter that you now have an IMDB page how, how does that how does, <laughs> how does that happen I feel like that's like a, a, a bucket list I like just does Mr. IMDB email you and it's like hey I made a page for you <laughs> 
no, this is actually quite embarrassing because <laughs> the way it happened, I didn't even realize I was in a film. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so bad. I hope the guy who made the film didn't realize this. But um, like, I, I mean, everyone, obviously, when we're going through a lot of stuff that's happened in the last two years on Earth, uh, there has been a lot of uh, strange moments. And somehow I totally blanked that last year I recorded, um, someone just sent me this uh, request to record something about um, my movie collection. They were putting together a documentary. And I said, I don't really collect physical media. I don't really have room in it. I live in a really small apartment and I just don't like having too much stuff. Uh, so I don't really collect physical media in terms of DVDs. I stream a lot online and I watch movies primarily on my laptop, which doesn't even have, you know, like a CD-ROM like drive. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm quite like on the go and I, I stream a lot. I love streaming um, services. I know that we all miss, you know, Blockbuster and all that, but I really do um, like streaming and the accessibility I think it's really cool um and so yeah I don't collect DVDs that was a long way of saying that but I don't collect DVDs <laughs> but I do um I have some VHS just a, you know just a couple and I have a lot of vinyls um so I have them because we do have like a record player and um, I listen to some soundtracks sometimes. So I said to him, hey like can I do records because I don't really collect physical media and anyway I recorded this clip and it turned out this was put into this documentary and the documentary is now on Tubi, which I don't know if you know Tubi or Tubi. I don't know how people say it. I say it with my weird Australian accent. So it's on there. And then a lot of people just started messaging me being like, oh my God, are you in this like video hoarders movie? I didn't expect to see you. I was like, that's not me. And then I looked it up and I'm like, oh no, I am in this. <laughs> and then I had to go and have a look on, um, I really hope the guy doesn't hear this. I had to go and have a look on um my gmail and go through it i was like what the fuck when did i do this sorry i don't know if i'm allowed to swear but <laughs> no you can swear it's, okay, it's totally fine <laughs> yeah i found it and i was like oh i did i did do this i didn't even remember i thought maybe he took it out of a video like i do so much content i do you know two videos main channel videos a week and i do a patreon video every single week and when you're doing that for six years sometimes you forget sometimes i google a movie to watch and my review will pop up so like i forget stuff all <laughs> <Yeah>. the time <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot because it just never ends. Anyway, so yeah, so I found that and then I was, I saw it was on IMDb and I was like looking through um, the cast and crew and a couple of my other friends were on there, Jay Bond um, and like just other presenters. And um, I was like, oh, like I'm on there, but I'm, I haven't got a, like a, a link to my IMDb page because I don't have one. I was like, I wonder how you, people go about getting them. Um, and my background in uh, why I'm into film is because I studied film. I have like two degrees in film and I worked in TV for like 10 years doing editing. Nothing fun. Like, I mean, it was fun for me, but I did like gardening shows and like cooking shows and stuff like that. Oh, did, um, you, did, you, did you get to do one of those Australian soaps? No, no. I did all magazine oh. lifestyle, which is all. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All, right. all the boring <laughs> stuff. Um, I loved working on the gardening show though. I worked on that for like three years and it was just like so peaceful because you just match what the presenter is saying with what flower is really cool <laughs> uh, um yeah, that sounds fun that sounds fun yeah yeah it's good for mental health for sure but anyway so I was like oh you know like I have all this like background in the, all these credits but I actually don't have a page so I mean I'm gonna admit it I made my own page that's all you have to do nice it was really hard to figure out how like what category to go in because you have to choose what category but I'm not an actor and I do never claim to be and um a lot of my history I've done editing and sound work and all that kind of stuff so it was all over the place um so yeah I made my own and then I added in uh just some like little short films and stuff I'd done anything that was actually on IMDb already because a lot of things I worked on are like Australian random tv shows that are just like afternoon specials on you know Sunday uh they're not really right going to be on IMDb. So yeah, I did that. <laughs> it's pretty shameful, but I did it. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And I, and I guess, you know, I have the same question, but for Rotten Tomatoes, because you're on there, you're certified, right? Yeah. Okay. I didn't do that. <laughs> They actually contacted me, which was really cool. Yeah. But but like, how does, how does that happen? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they found me. <laughs> Trust me. I wish I knew. Oh, okay. It's always so the coolest opportunities. They find you. I don't know how. But uh, they just emailed me out of the blue and they said, we really, okay. we really like um, your reviewing style and like what you have to say about films. Uh, do you want to be certified? And I was like, uh, absolutely, yes. And then they give you the option to either add your own reviews manually 
or um, they could do it automatically and have someone do it on the back end. And obviously I just asked them to do it because it's just so much easier. But they take a line of like part of your review and they put it on the <laughs> website. And sometimes I swear the person who does mine does not like me <laughs> because I just <laughs> pick like the worst lines and put them up there and I sound so bad. And Oh, oh no. God. But <laughs> it's fine. They link to your video. It's really cool the way they do it. They never used to let video creators do it. So I think it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I mean, I, I ask about this stuff because it's like super fascinating to me. Like, like film criticism. Oh yeah. Yeah. Film criticism is, you know, it, it sounds it sounds a little um, uh, pretentious, but like film criticism is really important to me. I, I read a lot and watched a lot of film reviews when I was younger and didn't like, you know, there wasn't like this whole sc- streaming landscape, right? So you didn't have access to a lot of this stuff. Um, and and uh, I mean, and the like film criticism game has changed in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, it used to be, hey, if you you were a critic, you were like employed by like a newspaper or a television station, and you were a film critic. Um, but now, and this sounds like a slight to people, but it's not. Now, sort of anyone can do it, and I think I think that's really good. Um, but I guess my question is like, do you ever get this like imposter syndrome feeling? You know what? Not so much because I've worked in TV before and I know everyone is just like full of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I work, I used to work in like a newsroom. So I worked in one of the biggest, like, new, well, the biggest newspaper in my state. And they also are a, um, like one of the biggest television stations in Australia. And they have, the, it's like the newspaper, the television, and they also have like online media and it's just all full of it. Like, it's absolutely all fake and everyone just like it's just depends whoever's on that day whose opinion they write and all that kind of stuff um and I know that like going from that back end like I saw um there is a uh, film critic here um, and I saw him getting all these opportunities that I wanted and I, you know, I was watching so many films and doing so many other things and he was just like, I mean, like all of us, liked films in his spare time but um, it was weird because I was working so hard on the side to, you know, grow um, Spooky Astronauts to what it one day became but this is like, you know, five years ago so I've been doing it for nearly seven years. Um, So... (laughs) I don't know, like you you can see how people who even have all the opportunities and are like right front center in front of a camera, um, it doesn't mean that they know more than you. And I think that's like a a lot of the older critics um, are a very like particular demographic. There are older people, usually like white men, and um, it's not with, especially with horror, it's, it doesn't uh, show every I guess diversity but it doesn't really show every perspective and that it's such like there's so much perspective in horror that it's so silly to get all of your um I mean I with reviews I recommend everyone to watch the film anyway I don't think I know more than anyone I think everyone goes in and picks the perspective from like what they know they get what they want out of the film especially with horror I used to feel like sometimes I get opportunities I'm like that's crazy but at this end of the day (laughs) it makes it kind of makes sense like if you do something hard enough and consistently enough um and I mean I do think I'm not like imposter syndrome with ro- rotten tomato stuff is like pretty does it trip trip you out that I say rotten tomatoes instead of tomatoes do you say tomatoes or tomatoes ah, it's fine I mean I mean I mean English is my second language I say stuff weird all the time uh yeah. and just sort of learn to roll with it <laughs> yeah it's, it's the Australian way I trip people out all the time um so yeah, it, with with that kind of stuff, obviously it's a very cool opportunity. Um, but um, the things that really trip me out is like when I see, you know, I've almost got a thousand, a hundred thousand um, subscribers, which that is insane. When you think about when I put a video up and I see how many people watch it, like instantly, like that blows my mind because I don't even know that many people in real life so that's more of the thing that like I don't know why people like that who actually love film come to me and want to hear what I have to say or what I think I think that's way cooler than any of like the bigger opportunities I guess yeah because it's consistent I wanted to ask you I are are you someone who like reads review I mean obviously not now um because you get the opportunity to review a lot of a lot of uh, films i know you've you've seen scream the new scream movie you've seen it twice now right Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but were you someone that like read reviews before you went and saw movies no never (laughs) never 
because I like I'm so into the like perspective and like I know I keep saying it, but it's just like, especially with horror movies, like you think about like films like Mids. I know I'm naming like every <laughs> two Ari Aster films, but with those films that like even like Carrie or stuff like that, like it's all about how you view it depending on your personal background and the characters and film is always something that's been so personal to me which is why I started a channel because I had no one to talk about it with um so yeah I never really came from that perspective I came from the um from having a background in film and tv loving youtube and loving just people I didn't even know any reviewers when I started I liked you know just like personalities and all of the really like simple kind of like vlogging and all that kind of stuff and just putting that together I didn't even realize there was a horror community until I like started becoming part of it um but now I guess I like having those discussions and I'm lucky enough that people want to have those discussions with me um after I see a film I want to see what other people think and I mean I'll check out some people's reviews like Nightmare Maven I love her um, and I just want to know because she's like a friend of mine. So it's more like people who I'm friendly with. I'm always like checking out what they think. Um, but I do, I worry about getting swayed by stuff. So that's probably why I wouldn't. But there are a couple of people I follow on Instagram and stuff. And if I see that they post like a movie poster and it's a new film that just came out or a film I'm not familiar with, I'll like have a look quickly at what they say and go, oh, okay, maybe this sounds like something I'd like. Which is kind of like why my channel is more, was more, or I guess it is more skewed towards trying trying to not spoil a film but letting you know whether it might be for you because I don't want people to waste their time you know yeah and I mean that's part of the reason why I really like your channel I think you do that stuff really well and that's something when I look at like what I want to be doing on on YouTube it's like hey that that's sort of like not really review but like more of like a, a friendly recommendation yeah you know I I feel like you may you may have answered this question a little bit but you know um with with Scream 5 you got to see it early I know you've done a lot of of Scream content uh this week <laughs> Yeah I have <laughs> You got to see the movie early and then you you did a uh, an interview with the directors that's very fun Um do you ever find it like hard to I don't know, stay impartial, uh, not get swept up in the hype. Yeah, it's a tricky situation sometimes. And I actually, I do have like, I do want to talk about this a little bit on my channel at some point, but I'm like having crossing that threshold where um, I've gone from being a fan who just talks about like horror movies and stuff to having these opportunities. And I do understand from a marketing perspective how they are trying to skew you a certain way. Like I totally get that. And I get that because I worked on the other side, you know, like I was in the news and I saw all that so I do have a hard problem like a hard time with that sometimes and it did kind of trip me out with Scream because I mean I'm not going to spoil anything but just to give you like a very base like opinion the new one after I saw it I was really taken aback by a couple of things in it I can't like I couldn't talk about them in the review because they were spoilers and it was really hard for me to pick my words and a lot of people thought I instantly hated it because I wasn't like being super like excited as soon as I like got you know initially my reaction but it was also it's also this really weird thing that you don't get to be part of like the community sometimes because you take those opportunities so I can't go online and like talk to anyone literally anyone about anything that happened in that movie I've signed an NDA you know what I mean like I couldn't do any of that and it it kind of ruins that that experience in a way as a fan you don't get to go to the movie and get like really excited with a friend and then both get to talk about it afterwards um and uh, I didn't give the movie a perfect score. Um, I thought that uh, I was really, really shocked and it tripped me out that night. I went on Twitter and I actually looked through the hashtag and I never do that because usually I see films late um, and I already know what other people like th kind of think or feel about it. Um, but I never get to see them earlier than everyone else. And everyone was raving and hyping the film up and no one was talking about any of the flaws or just being like, I don't know, more balanced about it. And I was, it was really tripping me out because I didn't get to have that conversation with anyone. So I had just done this review, which wasn't a hundred percent positive. It wasn't negative. Like I still think it's a really solid film. It's a really cool film. Just wasn't what I expected. Yeah. You, you gave the movie like a seven out of 10. It's like hilarious to me that people are like, she must have hated it. You gave it a seven. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. It's because people wanted me to like jump up and down, which is what everyone else was doing. Yes, of course. They want they want it to be a 10 out of 10. They want it to be, you know, as good as the original. Yeah. And so do I. Yeah, you know, of trust of me, course. so do I. People get really mad at me. And I'm like, dude, I want everything I watch, I want to be good. Um, and then I, I even had people commenting on the video with me interviewing the directors saying, do they know what you think about their films? Oh, <laughs> like I was like some shady person. <laughs> but I don't think people care as long as you're constructive and along all the people cared about with the scream, um, you know, like the PR for that, all people care about is that you're talking about the film. That's all. And you're not spoiling it. That's all they care about. So at the end of the day, you're still helping the cause no matter how you slice it, you know. But I am aware that like – I got to have that opportunity in exchange for something, which was the interview. Like that's yeah. technically what it was. It was an exchange. Um, Cause I don't get paid or anything for do, do those interviews. I don't get, um, and it's even under the amount of time I can monetize that video. So I'm not getting paid for that video being up or anything like that. Um, I only got a really short time with them. Uh, yeah. So it is a very interesting thing where sometimes I like doing interviews. Like it's such a cool opportunity as a fan, but um, other times I feel like it turns into this, it gets, I'm like, I have anxiety and um, like most people in the world, but I have like social anxiety as well. And then it gets into this thing where I'm like, oh my God, am I going to be like, okay, doing this interview and how am I going to be on it? And um, it takes away from the experience of being a fan and seeing the movie. And as I said, movies are such a personal thing to me. And sometimes I just like to go in, um, you know, by myself to the cinema, sit in the dark with a glass of wine and watch a really good movie and not have to talk to anyone about it. And it's like the most enjoyable thing, which is, yeah. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it's this interesting dynamic, right? Where you know, back in the day, so to speak, um, you would have you would have the press people, you would have the people doing the interview, and then you would have the critic. But now everyone is sort of doing all of these things, and, and it, it muddies the water, you know? Yeah, it's great when you love, like, you absolutely are obsessed with the film, and you're just like so excited about it, and you have that time to be excited with everyone else. But sometimes it's I don't know. This whole scream thing threw me for a loop when I saw people like just going nuts and hyping up I'm so glad that everyone is really enjoying it don't get me wrong but um and I still wish I could have said some things but I can't like it's so hard to talk about especially with Scream people have to appreciate like this is like the fifth in a series that is it's the only one done by different directors like there's so many different aspects that you can't even get into oh, it's so hard it's so hard <laughs> But that's, that's, yeah, I guess that's why I'm like a lucky person that people watch me. But it is, sometimes it feels like an easy quote unquote job, but sometimes it is hard. <laughs> that's the whole point of it, I guess. Yeah. Of course. I mean, a lot of those like feelings of like anxiety, it, it, like I've heard you speak about how you got uh, Mike Flanagan to be on, in one oh my of your God. videos. And I, you, you've, you, you've been over that. You don't have to tell that story again. Oh, but he's the best dude Yeah, ever. but like a lot of the things that you were talking about when you, you were, you know, talking about your anxieties of getting him to be on on your videos it was like it mirrors the way i i was feeling when i was emailing you like oh my god am i being oh my god don't feel that way no, yes <laughs> and, and like i know i know how strange that sounds because like we we're, we're all just in this space and we love movies right um but you know it's this thing of like am i being weird is this weird is it you know is, <laughs> <Yeah>. is... <laughs> you just have to go for it sometimes exactly you just have to, yeah. That whole thing with Mike Flanagan is so different, though, because, like, he is such, like, I can't even believe what a big star. Like, he's just amazing. And the fact that, like, I, I just, like, I'll quickly repeat just for people who might not know on here, but um, he, like, followed me on Twitter randomly because I did a cosplay of one of, um, from Gerald's game. And then I just messaged him one day and I was like, hey, dude, like, do you want to be one of my <laughs> I'll do I'm doing a ranking do you want to be in it and he like responded sent me 10 different clips like the fact that he sat down like this is so crazy because I just did this interview with you know the directors from Scream they gave me three minutes of their time it, uh, Mike Flanagan sat down on his own accord for like 20 minutes and recorded all of these separate clips giving me all this information he's never talked about to anyone about all of his movies like what the heck and then just <laughs> sent it to me like free of charge didn't ask for anything think oh, like he's such a cool dude like i have so much time for him i love him and i mean i mean that must have been a, that must have been around the time they were wrapping up um, uh, midnight mass or doing press for it so it must have been like it, a it was yeah and it, 
you know, the craziest thing though, is like when I opened the first clip, he goes like, I might, cause I asked him to do an intro clip. Cause I kind of talked him through like, oh, can you tell me about this? And I gave him questions in case he wanted like pointers. And, um, I said like, oh, I'm going to do an intro clip. So can you just like introduce yourself kind of thing? And he sent the thing and he said, <laughs> I did not tell him to say it, but he said like, hi, I'm Mike Flanagan. And, um, you know, Spooky Astronauts is one of my favorite reviewers and I literally just died. <laughs> and now that's like my trailer on my channel, <laughs> on my YouTube channel, because oh my god he's so cool anyway I'm just like such a fangirl like oh my god it's cool when like people you look up to are just as nice as like yes. normal people it's just weird because I'm not used to that I've, I've seen so many bad people in media that it's just it's so nice uh, I went to a lot of shows growing up it's always this thing of like um when you met someone in a band who is actually really cool and didn't have like that lead singer syndrome, yeah. like that made me like the band so much more because I'm like, okay, they seem like good people. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, let's just, I mean, you, you, you've talked a lot about Scream, but I, I think we should, we should talk a little bit about um, just the franchise as a whole. You know, this is going to be weird because I've seen, I've seen four of the movies. You've seen five of them. And we don't have to mention five. Like I, I've, I've obviously seen the first four a lot more. <laughs> We're going to keep it, of course, spoiler free when it comes to five. Like usually what I do on this podcast is say, hey, we can talk about spoilers. It's fine. But Scream 5 is, you know, it's new. <laughs> and and also, and also uh, I've, I've probably read, this is just the way I sort of um, tackle franchise movies at this point. I've, I've read enough about Scream 5 like spoilers to get me interested. <gasps> You didn't read spoilers. That's so bad. <laughs> I don't know. This is how I do with franchise films at this point. Like, I looked up everything that happens in the new Star Wars because I'm like, I'm not going to watch these movies. Oh, my God. I just, I just want to know what happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, like, so funny. Scream for me is like one of those. This is like one of those franchises that's a little bit personal to me because uh, I, I just love Wes Craven's films so much. Yeah. He was probably the first director I ever, like, took notice of and said, hey, I'm going to watch all of these guys' films um, because I watched, I, I probably watched that Hills Have Eyes remake, uh, which was not directed by him, but he was very involved with like the production and, you know, mm -hmm. it follows pretty much the same script. It's a good movie, that remake. Yeah, and, and uh, because of that remake, I ended up watching the original and then sort of discovering Wes through that so i actually came to scream kind of late it wasn't one of his first ones i watched which is interesting um in retrospect um but wes craven has such a fascinating filmography because i feel like from this, kind of the start of the 90s you can almost see him leading up to scream like uh the people under the stairs has this like cat and mouse chase throughout this house through throughout the whole thing mm. this film right um, you have obviously New Nightmare, which is very meta, uh, and then you have a film that's not that's not great, um, but it's a horror comedy, uh, Shocker, which is like crazy. Oh my god! Yes, but it's like crazy and just goes for it, and it's like he, he's trying to balance like this horror comedy thing in that movie uh i don't know i guess like just general do you have any wes craven like favorites that's not uh scream i mean scream is my favorite which is this the sad answer um no i mean no i mean nightmare on elm street it's the boring answer but i mean i like i think i actually prefer the remake of the hills have eyes um yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I get what you're saying, though, that he was kind of that was the next thing was Scream. I just he just nailed it, man. Like, it's it's pretty amazing. Isn't it so strange that Ghostface isn't one of like the top, you know, how there's like the top three, which is like, how is Freddy before Ghostface? I don't know. I never understood that. Well, well right. And, and, the, and the, the weird part about the Scream franchise is like, all these movies are pretty good. Like I have, I have reservations about free. Like I think that movie from a writing perspective is like, does not work as, as good as the other ones. Um, mm -hmm. But even scream free, like that's a fun slasher. You know, all these movies are pretty, yeah. all of these movies are pretty good. Compare that to like an I'm mm -hmm. street or Halloween where it feels like, you know, maybe 70% of all those movies are actually pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm just looking at his like background now. He only did the first two Nightmare on Elm Streets. Is that right? Uh, no, he did he did the first one, and then he ended up 
uh, producing and writing the third one, uh, and then and then New Nightmare. Okay. When it comes to Scream, like, um, how were you introduced to it? Oh God, I can't even remember the first time I would have seen a Scream movie because I was like six years old when the first one came out. Um, I used to like just rent a whole heap of um, videotapes when I was, you know, a teenager and watch them all the time um, with my stepsister. And we used to always watch like horror movies just over and over and over. So there was no real moment, um, unlike everyone else has a really cool story. But uh, it's really interesting with number four, I think, because with number four – I feel like my demographic, like how old I am, was like it really played into having that new generation because like Rory Culkin and Hayden Panettiere and Emma Roberts, like she was in, like they're all in kind of films or like TV shows and stuff like growing up um, and things that I love. And um, so it's so, it's really interesting that I don't think people have really spoken about this with the new Scream movie. Um, all of the new cast on that, are like I don't know them. Like I know that guys from like uh, 13 Reasons Why. I haven't even watched all of that. I could not get through it. <laughs> um, but, like, it's just really interesting because I think a lot of people will, might attach that as that a younger demographic. And um, it's just really interesting with all the 90s stars because, obviously, all the 90s stars in all of the other screams uh, and going through all of them. Like, there's, you know, Sarah Michelle Gellar and all that kind of stuff, um, that people you really attach to in the 90s. And it's, like, it's it was like the the slasher of the 90s and something that I, yeah, I just really love. Um, so I guess that's what I feel really attached to it because it's like a time capsule, like of all that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like a couple of things. It, Scream 2 like has such a stacked cast. Like it's amazing, the cast in that movie. Mm, yeah, it is. It's crazy. And just like Joshua Jackson for like one yeah, shot. Like, it's so <laughs> exactly. <weird. laughs> but, like um, Tori Spelling and Luke Wilson showing up in cameos. It, it, yes. it's like, it's, yeah. Weirdly stacked cast. Yeah. And Drew Barrymore for, you know, like five seconds, you know, like in the first one. So <laughs> I want to speak, speaking to Scream 4, like I, I definitely mirror a lot of what you say there in, in terms of what I felt about that movie. Like that felt to me like that was a right place, right time film uh, for me. Yeah. Where, you know, you had Hayden Panettiere coming off of Heroes and uh um all these like you know i i feel like that movie it came before all the, this this trend of like legacy sequels right which is kind of yeah. kind of amazing um and that you know everyone points to everyone points to sort of halloween uh 2018 but like scream 4 kind of did that first i don't know if like halloween h2o is that the last one i don't i can't keep up i'm sorry I'm sure oh, that's, right. they did do that. They had they like different casts, but it was never really like the younger kind of teeny cast. If I can, I mean, I'm not an expert, and I never pretend to be an expert on Halloween. People get real mad about Halloween, <laughs> <laughs> especially to us foreigners. Like, if we're not American, we like cannot talk about Halloween, <laughs> which is so funny. <laughs> Going back to the original Scream, uh, I'm I'm really glad we're at a point now where like the horror community seems to have uh embraced scream again as like a, a cool movie because when i was getting into like horror scream was not it, it was not like a cool movie to like <laughs> um and i i feel like that 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 negativity was really misdirected there's this sort of sense of like anything that's popular and influential is is actually bad uh you know there, there's this uh um there's so many 90s slashers coming out and and trying to do the scream thing but not doing it as well and and i feel like scream sort of got a lot of flack for that uh you know because so many people try to emulate it i don't know that's sort of my theory but i i i just remember like a lot of people kind of turning on that franchise uh, especially when i was getting into horror i didn't have that perspective at all but maybe because i just didn't hear people talk about scream because I started my channel after the fourth one came out. So there just hasn't been many people talking about Scream. Except for when the TV series came out. People love that TV series. And I think I only watched half of the first season. Like, it wasn't really for me. Yeah, I I mean, that's... that. TV series was okay. <laughs> um, the only point I wanted to make about the original Scream, because everyone, you know, what can you say about Scream that has, hasn't been said? Um, the only point was like, think back on it now and it's like how was scream not nominated for best original screenplay at the academy uh and and the reason the reason for it is because it's a horror movie and it's a blockbuster so um you know not really academy material but like you watch scream now like the more uh movies i watch the more i like scream because it's so smart 
Um, you know, I didn't really have that relationship to it when I was younger, but now when I watch it, I'm like, man, everything about this script is just, it's like perfect. Uh, it's so hard. It's so hard to do a mystery um, convincingly, especially if you have like a big cast of characters where like people are getting picked off, you know, like it's not really, it doesn't really have um, like a lot of loopholes or like things that just doesn't make sense. And, and they get, um, you know, that's why it's so smart in that original when, when they reveal it's two killers, you're like, oh, that's how they did it. Uh, that like that's how Ghostface could be at all these places at, at the same time, you know. Uh, it's just such a smart movie. Yeah, no, it is. It is. It's so clever. And yeah, I don't think anything's done it quite like been so self-aware in such a way that it's self-aware, which is fun, but then it's also just a good movie as well. <laughs> like it doesn't take away from the film. Uh, it has a very unique way of balancing um, comedy and um, horror, which is was really, really hard to do in the 90s. Like, it just was not done um, very well at all. And people still have a problem with it now, but um, especially in the 90s, it was just inc- incredibly hard. People only went one way or the other. Last thing um, I'll, I'll just add, you know, you did the ranking video, and uh, then you watch Scream Five. I, I don't. You don't have to like rank the movies now, but like, how do you feel about this franchise um, now after seeing the fifth one? And do you, without like spoiling it, do you think that there is room for them to make more of these? Someone now? wrote in my comments that number six was greenlit, but I've never heard that from anyone else, and I thought that was really weird that someone would just say that. I'm like, obviously, that would be a huge headline. Um, yeah, yeah, huge, huge get from the YouTube comments. <laughs> yeah, I know. I actually just said like, "Oh, I haven't heard that. Can you give me your source?" <laughs> like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I find it really hard to pair. I mean, it is the same. You know, it's the same original cast, all that kind of stuff. But be- because it's not Wes Craven, you feel it instantly. I really do feel it instantly, and um, I just find it really hard to see it as a ongoing flowing story as much as the other ones it feels a little bit more disjointed which is totally fine and expected having completely different directors and they aren't even trying to like I wasn't sure if they're going to try and mimic his style but they don't and um I mean I would put this one at the end um number five but just because it doesn't feel like a screen movie like the other ones do um moving forward i i I don't want them to do another one for reasons I don't really want to say because of this, like because of the spoilers. Um, but yeah, it's just, it doesn't make much sense. It, yeah, I don't want to, I, I, I'm so like choosy with my words around this because I know like any, any little dint or anything can give away like something that someone will like think about at night and then like, you know, come up with their own theories and I don't want to ruin anyone's experience. So, but uh yeah, I f- it, it really threw me for a loop because I thought that this one was going to be different in another way than it, what it became, um, which is very sounds very mysterious. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, I, I get it. Hey, maybe in like 10 years, the, it'll make sense for them to do another one when horror, the landscape of horror has changed again, you know? Yeah, well, they, it's like every 20 years, they do all the reboots and all the sequels. And it's always been like, well, not sequels, all the reboots and remakes. Um, and it's always been like that. People always go, oh my God, why are they making all these new movies, like the same movies? But they do, they do this all the time. Like we were just talking about... Um, the remake of uh, Hills of Eyes. Um, you know what I mean? There's always, it always comes back. And we're having Texas Chainsaw Massacre is like coming back next month um, for a sequel that ignores all the other ones. It happens. Um, and you can go, we can roll with it or, and get, or like get upset by it. Um, in 10 years, I might be ready. So <laughs> I might be okay with it. I'm never going to say like I hate on it until I watch it though. Like it's just not in my nature to be like that. Because you never know. Yeah, you know, for sure. I mean, when my only point is like when Scream 4 was announced, I'm like, oh, are they really doing this? And then when uh, Scream 4, I actually saw it, I was like, oh, this is so smart and like so much fun to like poke fun at like the remakes and, and you know, yeah. you call it a Scream make in the film, which is ridiculous, but fun. Um, yeah. And when he- hearing about how Scream 5 sort of tackles, you know, sort of elevated horror, like, mm-hmm. that term, but... <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't you know, know about that yeah. term. <laughs> um, yes, yes. But, like, hearing how they tackle all that stuff, you know, it's, 
okay, okay maybe, it, maybe it makes sense for them to make more of these, but uh, we'll see. Thank you so much for being here and, and, and talking about all this stuff with me. It's been, it's been uh, real fun. That's okay. Thank you so much for having me. If you have any questions about the show, hell, maybe even you want to be on the show, you can reach out to me. I am at Guest of Horror on Twitter and on Instagram. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.